splintered stars the Greeks would call them, or the frozen tears of the gods. In reality, however, diamonds are formed from carbon that crystallizes within a volcanic mass at extremely high temperatures. The crystals are brought to the Earth's surface by lava, where they cool. This is the same process that often produces coal, but on a few occasions, diamonds are created. And the fact that this happens so rarely is what gives this unique stone its magical appeal. The first reports of diamonds came from India. These early accounts speak of a stone of unbelievable beauty with a hardness and purity unmatched by any other stone on earth. The most beautiful stones were reserved for Indian princes and Brahmans. Persian traders took the remaining stones with them on their travels to Europe. Although there was little trade in diamonds during the late Middle Ages, a genuine diamond center had become established in Amsterdam by around 1586. Then, in 1727, the diamond trade received a tremendous boost when major diamond finds were made in Brazil and other countries. Amsterdam established a monopoly on these uncut stones and hence the processing of them. It was thus that Amsterdam's role in the diamond industry entered a period of unprecedented growth. In 1854, the Usher firm was founded. Usher quickly built up a reputation for turning out high quality, professionally cut stones. In 1907, King Edward VII of Great Britain approached Usher with the request to cut the Cullinan diamond. At that time, the largest diamond ever found. Although it was a special honor to be entrusted with the job of cutting this stone, it was also a risky undertaking. One faulty judgment, one incorrect placement of the cutter's blade, and not just the Cullinan diamond, but Usher's reputation too would be shattered to smithereens. Larger tools were created and the stone, its fault lines and irregularities were studied over a period of several months. On February 10, 1908, the stone was cut by Joseph Usher. Tension was at a fever's pitch when after the first stroke to the cutter's blade, the blade and not the stone broke. Only after two strokes did the stone split neatly in two according to plan. The Cullinan was eventually cut into nine large stones and 43 smaller stones. These were then cut and polished into various shapes and still grace the British crown jewels to this day. A diamond can be cut and polished into various shapes. The most common are the round, oval, pear-shaped, marquise, heart-shaped, and emerald cut. This is the Royal Usher cut, the result of years of research and based on a design developed by Joseph Usher in 1902. The Usher polishers have developed a special method to polish the stone with great accuracy. A laser inscription of the Usher logo and a serial number guarantees the unique origin of each stone. For the Royal Usher cut, special rough diamonds are directly imported from South Africa. Usher combines its century-old tradition of diamond polishing with modern technology to produce a diamond with 74 facets, 16 more than the normal round brilliant cut diamond. Usher's reputation is what has drawn so many famous people to Amsterdam. The names of these celebrities are listed in the firm's golden book. They include the Maharaja of Patiala, Emperor Hirohito, and his son Crown Prince Akihito, himself now the Emperor of Japan. In 1980, Usher was honored by the Dutch House of Orange with the designation Royal in recognition of the leading role the company has played in the diamond trade for more than a century. In connection with the marriage of Crown Prince Willem Alexander and Princess Maxima, on the 2nd of February 2002, a number of prominent guests paid a visit to the Usher firm. Amongst the royal company were Crown Princess Victoria and Queen Sylvia of Sweden, as well as Prince Edward of England.
For this special occasion, Usher brought together a collection of their finest pieces. In addition, the guests could become acquainted with the craft of cutting and polishing, which has remained unchanged for the past 100 years. Knowledge and experience are passed down from father to son. The task of monitoring the proverbial usher quality on a day-to-day -day basis now falls to the family's fourth generation, Edward and Yope Usher. In time, they too will pass on their expertise to future generations. Today, Usher can be found far beyond its original location in Amsterdam. The company is now represented in London, Paris, New York, Sydney, Seoul, and Tokyo. Despite the highly traditional nature of the diamond trade, the computer is an established and essential tool here as well. Computers are used to evaluate every aspect of the polished diamond, down to the tiniest of details. The technical data obtained in this way is entered on a certificate issued under the auspices of the Diamond High Council, or the Gemological Institute of America. This provides you with the security of an objective assessment based on standardized criteria. A diamond is a precious possession, not only for its intrinsic value, but also for the sentimental value embodied in each stone. It is a possession that retains its value from generation to generation. In the same way, the Royal Usher Company has maintained its finely honed expertise as a diamond merchant for generations, with a history stretching back over a hundred years.